When we look at continental Africa, some say there is a vacuum of leadership. So maybe that's where we're going to end up uh, going in our conversation. And to help us do that, I have here Coach Lorato Musa Tanyani. Uh, she is the director of Pinalit. Right. Good afternoon to you. Hi, Pinusang, and good afternoon to your listeners. Are you well? I'm very good. I'm yes, very well. Yes, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here for this conversation. I think it's very, very important that uh, we we start off with a very base understanding of the word leadership. But we'll get into it in just a little bit. And I'm also joined in the studio by Nikki Verde, who is uh, an, a renowned uh, leader, leader, thinker. Should I put it that way? An author. <laughs> an author and somebody who... Uh, on occasion just disrupts. Koro, you can wake up and just disrupt <laughs> things. <laughs> and I'm ready to understand. Yes, yeah. she's a, a, That's really a mover and a shaker. <laughs> right, so so maybe let's start here. I mean, because we're, we're really trying to get a, a definition of the word leadership mm. that will form the base of what our conversation will be um, predicated on. So let's let's start there. Hmm. By definition, or the working definition of leadership? The, the basic, basic, basic definition of leadership is uh, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. It's one who has the ability to influence things to go in the best interest of the people that they are leading. Right. Yes. Okay. Somebody who makes things happen. Somebody who makes things happen. Yes, in the best interest of the people that they are leading. Not somebody who give orders, right? Because I know uh, in our in our continent, the moment we hear the word leadership, we think position, and we think uh, somebody who gives out orders. That doesn't make a leader. A leader is uh, somebody who has the ability to influence people to see what they see and go with them willingly to where they are trying to take them to. I think it sounds a bit convoluted. I'm going to want to get a more simple definition, though I know it is a complex thing, a phenomenon. Um, I, I still want to condense it and maybe have it in its most simple form. So, so I don't know if, if, <laughs> if we can get to that. Yes. Nikki. We definitely can get to that. Let me see if I can try and simplify you just a little bit. The world in which we're living t today, everyone is sort of being a leader, right? Because when you put yourself out there, especially you just use social media, for example, all the influencers we're seeing, those are, that's leadership, okay. all right? Because they are telling us things and influencing our lives beyond what we could ever imagine, all right? They don't have titles, they don't belong in offices, mm. they don't have a whole um, set of employees under them. But we, the social media followers, we're being influenced by whatever they put out there, whatever style, this is fashion, whatever mm. mindset they mm -hmm. have is mm -hmm. influencing us. So leadership is no longer something that is confined to some elite people. Mm -hmm. Everyone is sort of leading in their own way. Interesting. Okay. I, and, and, and of course that begs the question, uh, I didn't mention the topic of disruption, that begs the question of a definition of disruption vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the bigger picture, which mm. is leadership. Mm. You want me to? Um, the only constant thing is the continuous disruption. If it's not technology, I mean, we were talking of 4 a.m. before right. we went into the pandemic. We are out there. We are not going back to the pre-pandemic. Uh, we yes. are going ahead. And the word disruption simply means, uh, even as a leader, you cannot sit back and say, I'm already a leader. Because you are leading people through a disruptive state. So mm -hmm. if you don't get yourself there, it means you are going to lead people against where the future is going. Right, right. Yeah. Hence, uh, it's very important that uh, leaders understand that and uh, lead in, in, in today's relevant uh, leadership ways and, 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 and methodologies. Yes. Yeah. I'm not a linguist, but you know, in the word disruption, I can pick eruption or uh, eruption or, you know, those sort of words which speak of something happening. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's not a state of, of, of just being still. Uh, you're in constant motion, you're constantly moving. Something continuously becoming better. Right. Yeah. Okay. Though, though, 
from the human uh, perspective side of things, when we hear the word disruption, it's almost like uh, how we perceive the word sacrifice. Okay. We think of losing something, while in actual fact is, yes, you start by losing, but for something better right. than what you had before. But most of us, we get stuck because we just think, I'm losing something. Yeah. Yeah, we, and we can't see beyond that I am losing this thing of lower value. Yeah. And I'm going to end up with something of a much better value than what I had before. So I think that's where the fear comes from. I okay. Like, I like what she mentioned about the fear of losing or the thinking when it comes to disruption, just about losing. And w when she was saying that, what comes to mind is the transition from um, a caterpillar to a butterfly, yeah. right? There's some disruption happening there. So the insert or whatever, it's losing the caterpillar state into the butterfly state, which is a more beautiful thing. You uh -huh. can be able to fly right. instead of just crawling, right? But some people, I think maybe the mindset, they want to stay in that place of crawling and never having that ability to fly. So disruption, yes, there is a negative aspect to it, but there is a positive aspect to it as well, depending on which angle you're looking at it. Right. And and I, I heard the word transformation in that, in, in terms of this being so disruption can be transformative. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's that's what you you essentially say. But Ronald Le Batswana, as as Batswana, we don't generally uh, like states of disruption. We don't um, necessarily like to be stirred and have that feeling of of nervousness uh, or anxiety that is associated with with not knowing or not having some sort of order. So how then do we go about it in an environment like the one that we operate in? Uh, where the the status quo is let's be as orderly and as less disrupted as possible and as safe and as, as safe as we possibly yes. can be yeah they say, say that uh goes around here that uh the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know yes and i think uh when you talk disruption you took in change transformation and change by its nature it's uncomfortable yeah. because it's pushing us from our our usual, our known, our comfort zone. You know how we use this comfort zone? Mm. Even the most uncomfortable people in their job or their current stage, they still consider that the comfort zone as uncomfortable as it may be. So I think uh, as, as, as human beings, as we interact and engage with a certain space, we come up with strategies of surviving in yes. that. And when we are pushed out, it's almost like I have to find new ways of surviving in the new space. And that's why we may be not as open as we possibly, as one would expect us to be, especially if you say Rona as Botswana. Yes, you yes. know, we will be uh, mourning and crying and complaining about a lot of things. And even things that are brought before us to take us out of that uh, discomfort, we still complain because uh, we are used to being uh, in that state. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. We are creatures of routine. Yes. We are creatures of um, a pattern, you yes. know, and and as as the, the, the sun rises from the east and sets in the west, that's how we want our lives to be. Yes. So here you are telling me that I have to introduce an element of disruption yes. in my life. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now I want to understand where where does where does where should it it, it start from? Mm. Uh, this this sort of um, disruptive force or whatever I may call it, yeah. you know, is it something you you uh, kind of feel from outside and and that maybe affects the changes that have to happen inside of you, mm. or it has to happen from the individual then going outside. Mm. If I can take yeah. that, it's, it's both ways, right? There are times where it happens from inside, right. it's based on where you are in life and what you want out of life. Though that thought process can cause a certain process in your life that will end to disruption. And then there are cases like the COVID-19. We all know it came from outside, right? Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. completely disrupts the world, not just, you know, not just an individual, the entire world globally was disrupted. So it goes in, disruption happens both ways. But I think the best way that people should actually um, work towards is from the inside. Mm. What do you want out of life? Where right. do you want to be? What 
maybe in business what type of business are you trying to build you know and things like that and then from those questions you are able to disrupt yourself and you mentioned routine yes there's a book i'm currently re reading by jordan peterson and he speaks to of chaos and order right right and he mentions where there are people that just want order in their mm. life like everything should just be if i leave a teacup here i come back i want to find it there like yes. <laughs> that is how it should be yes. that safety that certainty and all of that he mentions that's a pathetic way to live right mm. and then there are those that operate on the other extreme chaos yes. everything is constantly always on chaos disrupting in their life i mean also that's not the best way to live it's not mm. healthy mentally right mm -hmm. so there has to be a balance mm. where you cause some certain disruptions and if you come from outside you are able to manage it to balance yourself so routine is an idea that seems nice and sweet but it's not attainable, mm. <laughs> it's not attainable. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And, and it won't take you anyway Right. You know, I mean, if you if you go for safety, which is more the order where you can predict everything, the next step that is going to happen, then uh, that's your choice. But live with it, because you know the amazing thing with us as human beings is we would prefer the safety net, while in actual fact we want the results that are attained by people who disrupt where they have to. And to answer that, mm. whether it should come from the inside or the outside. I will say from the inside, and that summarizes the story of my life. Right. I trained as an accountant and worked as one for 17 years. Somewhere along the way, uh, it wasn't as appealing as it was when I got my degree and my ACCA. And I decided uh, I'm going to disrupt myself, but right. I want to do it in a manner that I'm still in control so that I can be kind to myself, push myself and still have the ability to say, uh -uh, I'm pushing a little too, uh, too much. Right. So I disrupted myself and left my accounting career nine years ago and changed, started a completely new career as an integral professional coach. So that's why I'm saying I prefer from the inside and I've, I've gone through that because that way, you know, you can be kind, unlike if you are pushed into it. Because you never know how much the person who's going to push you into it, how far they can push you. Right. Yeah. Now, let's nice contrast and completely... I want to contrast and compare here. Yeah. Um, a, a leader in this day and age and a leader then, maybe before the the advent of, of COVID-19, how, how, how does this leader within this time differ from a leader back then? What are some of the qualities that are, are sought after in, in, in today's leader? Mm. You want me to speak to that? Yeah, start it. Um, I think that leadership back in the day was very much like we, we had more of a stable environment where there was, you could plan five years, you could plan 10 years and you still execute based on what happened in that boardroom, right? Um, but now it's completely different. The five-year plan is sort of dead, obsolete, because the world is constantly changing. We don't even know what's going to happen in the next six months. We don't even know what's going to happen in the next three years. We don't know what new technologies are going to come to completely disrupt the marketplace. So the leader now needs that mindset of constant change, constant evolution, constant training, constant retraining, and all of that. There's one of my favorite quotes that says from Alvin Toffler, he said, the illiterate of the 21st mm -hmm. century will not be those who cannot read and write, but mm. those who cannot unlearn, relearn, and continually learn. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. The, the leader <laughs> that's, today that's kind needs of scary, a actually. totally different mindset. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can't have uh, somebody who, who dies for the ideal yeah. or the order to lead us. Because like I'm saying, they'll be leading and ushering us into a world that doesn't exist yeah. anymore. So uh, we, we need a leader who can just fly. Uh, because if, if we have such a timid and, and fearful person in front of us, they will probably, uh, uh, we'll probably stumble. On them yes and 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 cause casualties and it will definitely not get anywhere the reason why i say it's a little bit scary for me is because it sounds very darwinian uh you know in in saying what is survival of the fittest mm. and now the fittest and those that will survive are those 
who are able to be malleable in terms of you know some of the external forces out there and the changes that are happening constantly mm. um and and maybe that also begs the question of uh generation x for example mm. you know those are ceos the c suiters uh those that are, are decision makers you know they 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 don't like much disruption to be quite honest you you will find a situation where a generation x leader is 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 not comfortable with a simulcast is not mm. comfortable with mm. a hybrid mm. system mm. Uh, uh, mm. you know whereby there's mm. a virtual setup and an, a physical setup they want very much tangible and 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 you know physical See the speaker, things touch the speaker. <laughs> yes. so how how do you how do you orient yeah. that person uh into this yeah this this mindset of let me tell a quick story before we yeah. get into that right i was in pretoria not so long ago attending an event when i got in there uh, I was supposed to sign in. The protocol is very difficult to get in there, right? And I'd forgotten my ID, the physical copy of my ID. Yeah. It's a technology company, massive. I'm not going to say the name on, on, on air, right? Yeah. And boldly, the attack line on the wall, I'm at reception, the attack line on the wall is driving innovation, mm. right? Mm. But they wouldn't let me in because I don't have my physical ID with me. Right. Even though I told them I have the digital copy on my phone. Now, when I'm standing and I'm trying to argue with the people at the reception, I'm like, come on, you have innovation written behind you. Yeah. And I'm here with my digital copy and you're telling me, no, we don't do digital copies. We can only let you in if you have a physical ID with you. And I'm like, does this make sense to you? He looked at me and said, you know what? It doesn't make sense, but all does come from the top. Right. Mm. And, and, and that, mm. that is exactly mm. what I'm asking. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, mm. it's a very interesting aspect that you're bringing up. As much as uh, that generation prefers the familiar, the known, yeah. the touching, uh, mind you, more than 50% of the people that are leading are today's generation. Right, right. Your, your, what do you call them? Your millennials. Your millennials. Yes, and, and, and yeah. that's where the huge shift needs to happen. Because if I take me as an example, my kids are millennials. Yes. You know? And I'm not going to sit in the house because that's where leadership starts. I'm not going to try to raise them the way my mother raised me. Yes. Because like I'm saying, I'll be raising them for the world that doesn't exist. And the, way, the day I release them out into the world, they will be in total shock. Right. So by the way, we have a leadership event and one of the speakers is talking exactly to this point that mm. we are talking about, mm. how to lead across generationally. And they are saying for the, in the past over 100 years, for the first time, we're having like three generations all working at the same time. Right. You can imagine if my mother is just about to go and me and my 20 year old child and my mother wants where we can see a speaker and by doing that she would expect this child to come and sit in that room for the whole yes. day watching this. And this child is saying, no, I want to watch this person from the comfort of my room. Mm. And, and, and that's a huge risk if we are not intentional about managing it because otherwise there will be no one to take this radio station forward right. the day your Tumi songs retire so it's a fact that we cannot run away from right we need to find a way and mind you this are the future this is the future generation everything that we are doing today we are doing it for them and the next generation yes and yes. if we are going to do something that doesn't appeal to them because we want to meet the strategies that we, we, we signed so many years ago, then everything that we are doing is in vain. Mm, mm. So the sooner we get closer to understand their thinking, to understand their preferences, the better. Right. And we would have done that generation justice. So who would benefit from a conversation like this? Uh, in terms of your professional uh, environment, uh, looking at you know the setup that we have, We've got uh, the administration block. We have the, you know, the C-suite. We have, who who really benefits from this kind of of, of conversation? I would say none of the stakeholders should be left out. Mm. 
Yes. And, and, and going back to her example, uh, I'm coming here to meet Dumi Samuti. Yeah. But you are not the one receiving me at the gate. Mm. And if you have that note, and that guard who was opening for me doesn't have a clue what is going to happen, mm. you may be sitting here waiting for me, but because we thought he's just a security officer or a gate man, and yeah. we leave them out of the picture, the very good plan that we have may be frustrated right. because we left one very key stakeholders the gatekeeper and, uh, the gatekeeper essentially yeah yeah so they need the expertise that i have and the experience mm. i need their fresh way of doing it because like i'm saying i'm not doing anything for my mom or the previous generation i'm doing it for this generation and the coming generation so we need to find a way instead of uh, rejecting anything that is not uh, acceptable to us in our own terms we need to get closer understand one another so we can co-create the future knowing very well that these are the people that we're going to hand over the baton to not the previous generations nice and and those uh, in the interview room that ask you know uh, what is your five-year plan uh, <laughs> should they, they should they should not Tell be excluded crazy. from <laughs> No, because it's a question that's still no. asked even today. No. Yeah, they yeah, ask I agree. You, yeah, I agree. Where do you see yourself in five years? Yeah. I think, well, if it's okay to still maybe have a plan, but understand that you need to be very open minded and be willing to change as the world is changing, be willing to evolve as the world is evolving. If you have a five year plan and you want to stick to that five year plan, come rain, come shine, then that is not leadership. You know, you just. No, I'm, probably don't even know what you're doing. So it's important to have a plan. Yeah, but understand that it, it may not turn out exactly so as it is on paper. Question? Let's just do a practical you know, <laughs> uh, a scenario here. How would you recommend that one answers a question like that? And, and this is something like I'm saying that uh, is oftentimes asked within an interview room. Where do you see yourself in five years? Let me let me take it from the perspective of me as a coach. In 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 five years, I'll be coaching cross generationally more than I'm doing that. I'll be uh, uh, diversity and inclusion is the key thing, because otherwise, if I'm looking for another Lorato to coach five years from now, I would not have any clients to coach. Yes. Yes. That's, that's basically where we are coming from. And that's why we are saying, uh, this, instead of looking for the norm or the normal, our new normal is disruption. Yeah, the moment you get comfortable, ask yourself, how can I make myself more uncomfortable so that you develop muscles for that and minimize the amount of shock as you will be going forward? Because that is the only thing that we can be sure of more is still going to happen yes yeah they say the only constant thing in this world is change, change. yeah um and and uh, maybe that brings us to to now uh, finding out how we can continue this conversation because we're, we're just focusing on uh, just one aspect of i must think a whole volume that can be produced from this conversation of leadership so mm. how how do we con uh, continue this conversation you're a coach and you are an author uh, and uh, a speaker, a, a, a thought leader. Yes. <laughs> I'm taking one. <laughs> I'm taking one. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always say to uh, Miss the only guarantee of how uh, your tomorrow, of how you can ensure that your tomorrow is better than your today is by the amount of investment you do in you, right? not on anything outside you. Because I don't think I am ready for the unknown future stems from I am not sure of the capacity that I have to keep evolving. So for me, that's the key thing. And that's where uh, I come in as a coach to yeah. say, uh, you know what? Uh, I know we, we, we normally talk of coaching when we talk of our national yes, football teams. Yes, yes. And I can't imagine any country that can go into any soccer tournament or whatever without a coach. Without a coach. If you are serious about your future and you believe you are a future leader and you go into that without a coach, it's like going into the World Cup without a coach. 
you mm -hmm. need disruption by its nature just like change it's very uncomfortable yeah and you need somebody who will create that safe space for you and be able to walk that journey with you and and help you to stomach the level of discomfort mm. and that's where a professional coach comes in where can we find you and um, how can we learn about some of your your activities yes uh, we have a different leadership programs for different levels of leaders covering the wide spectrum of leadership like communication um, developing people personal growth and we based in fairgrounds uh in the office park our numbers uh, our landline is 3914697 if you want to get more on the off on our offerings and by the way uh 99 of our leadership programs are accredited by the Botswana Qualifications Authority. Mm -hmm. So we we not uh, a fly by night. Fly by night. Type of, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> we've been we've been speaking, doing, and sleeping leadership yeah. for the past nine years. So we're talking of uh, creatable right. pro programs. Yes. yes. And yeah. uh, you can hit us on WhatsApp. You know we are talking cross generationally <laughs> now. They don't even know what I'm talking about when I talk landline. So hit us on seven five eight zero. Six nine seven five. I mean, I know they don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Or we available on almost all the social media platforms. Look for Coach Lorato Musatanyani or Pinalit. www.pinalit.com, and we will prepare you for the future. Nice. And Nikki, uh, you you mentioned that you're an author. Uh, is there? a place where we can find your your books or your offerings yes absolutely for for now you find me tomorrow at the penalty conference because you see i didn't talk much today because there's so much i have to say tomorrow right, right. <laughs> so for those who want to hear my thoughts on leadership during disruptive times yeah you can come tomorrow for the conference mm. that is where i'll be unpacking some of my thoughts right. you know regarding the times in which we're living and how leaders can transition in these disruptive times that being said yes my books they are available here in Botswana because this is my second time of coming back to Botswana okay. so um, yeah my books are available at exclusive books Botswana I don't know if they're still where I found them last time it was airport junction I think <laughs> so yes I am there and I'm also Nikki Bird online social media Nikki Bird I don't think there are two of us I believe I'm the only one so when you find type Nikki Bird anywhere, I will come up and we'll definitely connect. Awesome. That being said, I would just want to say one last thing in regards to investment that you brought up. And there's a story that happened quite recently that my son asked me, I paid my way into uh, a conference. Usually I get paid to come and speak at conferences, right? So this time I paid my way and attended a conference where I was not being paid. And my son was asking me, but mommy, why would you do that? And I told him that there are two ways of learning. You can learn and sit in a classroom for whatever, maybe two, three years, or you can pay your way and learn in rooms of this caliber with different types of people, this type of caliber of people that I was mentioning to him, right? And I told him for the four days I was at that event, it wasn't a one, yours is one day, right? I was there for four days, right? The lessons I learned in that room, no classroom would have mm -hmm. taught me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I told him that I'm like, I understand you're in school, but I'm just teaching you what happens when you become an adult, right? That education changes. Right, right. <laughs> Everything is not being paid to sit in a classroom. So for those who are re really looking forward to investing in themselves, Conferences like this is a huge opportunity right. for you to learn. You could decide, okay, I'm just going to go back to, sc to school and reskill, which I call it in my book as recycling your problems, right? People, when they think of reskilling, they just say, I'm going to go finish that degree I started in 1904, right? Mm. They're not thinking, is this still going to be relevant by the time I finish? They're not yeah, thinking right. like that. They just want to go get a degree. Yeah. So what you could learn at a conference like this in one day would be much more relevant for you than going back into the university and getting a degree. Like universities still need to catch up in some ways right. in relation to where the world is going mm. so when someone is going back to an actual university without questioning what i'm studying is it going to be relevant by the time i graduate i think that they're just recycling their problems because right. by the time you graduate you'll still be sitting with a problem you started with 
before going back. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We've run out of time, but um, a very interesting conversation that I wish to have on the sidelines uh, some time and, you know, I get to share my, my thinking as well from a philosophical point of view. Uh, but thank you so much. I've learned so, so, so much in just this little bit of time uh, on disruption and how we can maybe uh, inculcate that into to people, into uh, professional um, operations and whatever. But um, until we meet again, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Right. So I hope that you could learn something today. Um, disruption, 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 comfort uh, is not always a good thing. So let's see how we can unnerve people and <laughs> cause a little bit of a stir <laughs> in your lives. <laughs>